though, so we will have that right. Okay. Okay, so hold on. So I'm what one more thing the students do a lot is generally they type the word Fedora and then the sub project name or say design or ambassador or cloud kind of words in Google. And most of the time the first thing comes up is the wiki page for the SIG. And that's where they get started getting confused. So they're they're starting, Kushal, they're starting with the wiki page and it's not correct. Is that what you're saying? No, the wiki pages are correct from our point of view because we know how to uh, parse that wiki page. I mean, what is the meaning of the all the stuff, like time, meeting times, members, mailing list, and the things. But when uh, when I talk to the complete new students who never contributed to Fedora before or don't know how things actually work, they get confused a bit with the wiki pages. And we have okay. to explain them. This is how like, these are the meanings of these different parts. Great job. I think that's what he's getting at. Right. Okay. One of the main problems that I usually have is that people always ask me first to be an ambassador and then to contribute with something. So probably we should do for every other team the same thing that the ambassadors are doing just to ambassador. Because the, the idea will be that somebody who is already helping earn the ambassador tag or whatever that call is. So if we could uh, point some more interest into the teams instead of the ambassadors, probably that will get us a lot of contributors more than just people speaking off the door. So what's happening, Tatika, is people, if they want to join, they're going to ambassadors and joining ambassadors instead of the team that they might be better suited for. Okay. We might want to actually be there. Yeah, they copy. Sometimes they don't even help. It's just like, I want to go to a conference and I want to help Fedora, so make me an ambassador. And right. when you ask them, okay, so what do you want to do? No, I just want to speak yeah. about Fedora. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So we should note that that is unreal. The video. Oh, okay. Wait, did you bring it up? I, Hold on. I can't get it up full oh. because you're not because you're you're not getting audio on this on this, which means you're not one of the most recent uh, contributors, so it only shows the last five. Would you mind transcribing it? I can attempt to do that. Yes. Or if you want, you can write. It. Which uh, one would you rather do? If I transcribe them, they'll be readable. Can people okay. see the post-its? <laughs> I can see that there are post-its, but I'm pretty sure. Yeah, what we're gonna what we're gonna start doing is Steven's gonna to transcribe the post-its into the pirate pad, okay? Just so you guys can follow along. We're we're we've never done this before in video chat, so we're figuring out what works as we go along. All right. Does anybody else have, have any other impressions or ideas or thoughts about just being a brand new Fedora contributor and trying to start out? Yeah, can you hear yes, me? Uh... Yep. Okay, Ralph, go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Just that sometimes people come in two kinds of categories. Sometimes they know what they want to do, like they, they use Fedora and something bothers them, like the design on something is not to their liking and so they want to change it and they know what to do. And other times, kind of like Tatiko was saying, people come along and they want to help, but it's like a, a kind of abstract or extrinsic thing. They're like, helping Fedora is the right thing to do, so please find the thing for me to do. And it's hard to know what that is when you don't know what their interests are. There's like a matching process that's really undefined. And maybe as, as I write them out, I, I wrote, I want to help, what should I do? And then I put, I want to change something, help me change this thing. Yeah, yeah. following the same uh, thing what Ralph said, so these days we keep getting new people who knows programming, say let's say about Python or web development, and they want to contribute to Fedora. But at the same time, they get confused between so many places we actually track things. Like we have Fedora hosted tracks where like different projects, sub projects are tracking things. Then we have the infrastructure applications where like few of them, they are in different places. And sometimes the tickets are on uh, GitHub. Uh, the easiest thing I found always was to point them to Ralph and Pingu, but I know that bothers them a lot, I, I think. So Not that, that becomes a problem for me. That becomes a problem time to time right. because uh, these people want to contribute in something else. Uh, let's say documentation, it's another example. 
and we generally tell them like okay go through the wiki maybe you can start finding the basic things but other than like uh, maybe fixing english or spelling mistakes or grammar we do not have a complete way of like this you follow this guide step by step and you will you'll know how to start contributing to one particular sub projects okay so like development guide we have development guide for bigger app uh, applications correct like how how can you start contributing to anaconda like these are the things this is how you can test it this is where you should write code these are the people to talk to kind of things so similar so maybe we should have a development guide per sub project you yeah, kind so of that you just yes. point yeah. someone to it when they want to start on that project yes okay uh and for uh, and for me i think the way i have started i can say it is best to talk to the person who is already doing uh, in that particular project like i have started with the fedora qa project in fedora and uh, i was i did not get the proper uh, guideline from any anybody uh, till the time i did not talk to the adam williamson or the persons who are already or the people who are already working in the fedora qa team because they know the process and they know the uh, tasks going on the current project uh, the best so i think there should be one representative or one point of contact in each and every project who can talk to these people and who can guide these people well i know there are the introduction mails and everything um, in place in these mailing list and uh, these people reply also but sometimes a few uh, you know uh, sometimes hand holding for few starting days will also kick start the thing and help helps a lot uh, that is what okay. i can say from my personal experience so what i put on the note was it's best to talk to a person already working on what you want to do and then i put the question how do you find that person yeah Hey, hey Mo, I, I, I guess I will, I'll jump in and, and I guess d from the from the role playing aspect, um, I, you know, I'm that person looking for a job. Hey, I, you know, I, I saw the information that said I should introduce myself on the mailing list. So I wrote this nice big long email explaining who I am, what my skills are, and what I like to do. I, and I got some people who said hi and no one else responded. So it was cool to make some, it was cool to make a couple you know almost friends, but but I, I still don't know what I still don't know what to do. And how quickly would you want a response? How long did you wait? How long do you want to wait? Yeah, I, well, so you, yeah, people are <laughs> forty five seconds. Um, I you know I know people are busy, but you know a response. Uh, I send my email on Saturday um, because that was my day off but nobody responded by monday night okay so within three days or, maybe you know or tuesday night right i that, i think that would be i would start to lose heart after about three three or four days okay um that that was some of the things that we spoke at the last flow that i went is that one of the main concerns about the people who is already contributing is that they don't have time to be answering every single mail of every single person that is coming to town. So it will be a good idea to have a people person for each team that is able to provide that personal assistance that every new member is going to require. And then once he knows what to do, who's the people around, how you get in touch with them, how do you get in touch with them without being uh, 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 disturbed for their work, then you know how to contribute. Because for example, right now I'm building a house. Uh, sometimes I help and I really don't have time to answer almost any mail, which happens to change from month to month, depending on how work and life is going. But if I have somebody that it tells me, okay, so I had this person who introduced me to the crew. This is the work that is possibly going to be done. Can you help me doing this particular ticket or uh, with this conference or with this wallpaper or stuff? So probably just going to the main issue of 
how to work and having somebody to debug the people that is really wanting to contribute and not, not just missing our time. Okay, so what I wrote is, um, oh, where did it go? Welcome wagon. All right, yeah, so I put the idea we could have some kind of welcome wagon person per team. And I had another one. Oh, right, I tried to help, but people seem so busy, they don't respond. So those are the post its I put from your ideas, Tessica. And just as a quick re reminder, I am transcribing all of these to the pirate pad. So if you're not signed into the pirate pad, I. Get out. Get out. All right. Any other any other ideas for like the absolute brand new newbie? What their experience is? Uh, getting an account. And, um, well, that'll that'll be our segue to the next part. Yeah. So you found someone. They're gonna help you out. But first, they need an account. Okay. Uh, actually, I I want to jump back for one uh, one thing prior to that. Uh, how did I find my way to any of this in the first place? I, I mean, I uh, maybe I went to a uh, an install fest and I got a copy of Fedora. How did I discover where? find more information. How did I get there in the first place? I mean, by the time somebody has found fedoraproject.org, they've made that that particular leap already. How did I get there? There's a lot of different ways, I think. There's well, I, I'm, I'm not trying to answer the question. Yeah. I'm not looking for an answer right now. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm saying this is a question to ask. Right, right. How did I get here? Yes. What am I doing in this strange place? But I, I think one important thing to think about is that no matter how they got to Fedora in the first place as a user, starting to think about becoming a contributor, there's a lot of that where they may not have had any contact with someone who's working in Fedora. You know, it may have been a magazine article or some kind of YouTube video or something where they don't have a direct personal contact. A blog they entry they saw. Establish a good relationship and everybody gets, they gets a Fedora laptop when they, when, they, when they come in, right? Shouldn't be easier just to have a survey for that? I mean, something that they can fill a, a web page once they select the team that they want to be part of and just fill the yeah, survey. That could be. This is how I met you. Survey questions as part of sign up process. Okay. And I'm going to put. If that, if that survey could also include some type of indication of what their skill level is or experience, that would be great. As part of the intake process, uh, that we might want to examine because if you ask someone their skill level when they're signing up for something, their usual uh, reaction is to wonder if they're skilled enough to be here. But we would do it the right. I mean, yeah. the general we idea. We have to phrase it in a way where it wouldn't be threatening. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm, I'm it's just not saying, like we're going to give them a programming test or something to, before they can join. There are an awful lot of, the, of programmers on this call. You have to be careful of that. But that's what I mean. We're not going to give someone, <laughs> no, you can't contribute because you're skilled. Okay, so one that I'm going to point out, because I've onboarded a few designers recently, is this SSH key thing. When you sign up for a FAST account, they have no clue. What is an SSH key? Why do I need this? So I'm just going to put what is an SSH key. And because it also asks for a PGP key as well. I it's think. optional though, right? I think the SSH Oh, uh, do you require an SSH key? I think, I think so. Well, they, what they want is they want to get the space, which is not as critical as it used to be. And then they want to get, I don't know. I think it's, I think it's required if you want the Fedora people space. Oh, uh, okay. Which? I don't know, it's the SSH key? Yes. And then it, all of the main thing. Yeah, no, but the main thing is for the new designers is they want to be on planet and they can't get on planet because they uh, can't SSH space. to the server. And yeah, that's why it is. Let me uh, just put that. That's just, for just for the record. Uh, uh, like, actually go to my I'm going to sound old. My, uh, my uh, document for what is being aggregated includes some dozen people that don't have full or accounts that whose blogs are worth having, so I've yeah. been voluntarily uh, including them in, on my people space. That's a good idea. 
Yeah, that, that is something I'm going to sound old, do. but when I, yeah, what, yeah, just go, go, go ahead. Okay, so uh, just one more thing uh, more that if we add some kind of uh, guideline guidelines or help uh, helping documents to explain what is SSH key or how to create account or anything, it will be nicer if we can have a visual uh, visual guides rather than only text based things which we have in the wiki because people can catch them up very fast rather than only text. So I feel like at a certain extent, I have someone who wants to be a designer and they want to do design work. And if I'm spending six hours with them, educating them on how like cryptography works and how SSH connects you to a computer and how you have to use Vim to edit text to get your planet feed, they spent six hours on stuff that they may not necessarily care about at all. And they get the picture that Fedora is about programming and it's about SSH keys and it's not about design at all. Because there are other projects out there where you you literally, you get a login to their site and you start uploading artwork right away. There's no SSH key, there's no learning stuff that you don't necessarily care about. And when you have people, this is, I'm sorry to rant, but when you have people where you're forcing them to learn something they're not actually interested in and they don't actually need to know about except like once a year, because that's how often some people in Fedora SSH into their accounts, they're never going to remember it. Because they, they have the lack of intrinsic motivation and then they have the lack of frequency to. So that's the only thing that I worry about with like, we, we'll spend a lot of time and effort on educating people when maybe education is not the right approach. I think 90% of that can be, it can be solved by some of the ongoing work that I'm trying to push with uh, with getting fast enrollment done uh, as part of uh, Economical Setup and some of those things where, oh, that we, where, where, where on your first si sign up, we can basically just generate you an SSH key li uh, silently, tie it, to your, uh, tie it to your password and then use that. Yeah. Can, can we just, yeah. Can we instead just auto generate your planet config? Like put your blog uh, link in fast and then we don't, need, uh, we don't need to discuss the details here. I'm just I, 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 I've got some ideas for how we can we can make some of that not visible, not necessarily visible. I think I think the idea of the planet is just to use it as an example because there has been work done on fast two and it's really part of fast three of being able to actually add your website on the planet without going through federal people. So the the planet is, in this case, we should consider the planet just being an example, not a, an actual uh, something to work on. May I ask a question? Sure. Uh, do we really want people who have no interest to learn about such things like SHH? Yes. 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 Yeah, definitely. Because, I mean, the thing is, like, I'm good at design, right? I don't know crap about cars. And I need to get in a car to get into the office to work on my design stuff. Should I need to know how to rebuild my car's engine to do my work? I mean, that's the only thing. I mean, if somebody could get by in Fedora for a year without ever logging into their SSH account, maybe it really isn't important for them to know. I mean, we're very much, we're very tech, technically grounded in Fedora. We're very technical, we're very, but the problem that we're finding is we want more non-technical contributors and we're not getting them. And I think it's because, how could you not know what SSH is? Oh man, it, it makes people feel stupid. I think they, they don't necessarily need to know or they could know at a conceptual level, but not actually have to do it. <laughs> yeah, but on the, on the end, uh, you will be a better designer in Fedora if you have at least a little bit of knowledge what Fedora is and about some. Oh, absolutely. Some oh, yeah, but you don't yeah. have, they don't have to know it up front. That's yeah, they shouldn't that. need to know. I mean, if, if we want to save someone from the Adobe mind melt, we got to pull them out gently. We can't just like throw them off the cliff into Fedora and be like, welcome to free learn software. To fly, learn to fly before you hit the ground. Right, right. I mean, it has to be a gradual ramp up. I mean, maybe once they've been a designer in Fedora for like six months or a year, then they'll naturally build the intrinsic motivation to learn more. And then we can teach them how that stuff works. And then, you know, sort of like peeling the layers of an onion, you know, they'll get to the center of the onion eventually, but they got to build up experience and interest first. Because I mean, I, we all started there, right? I mean, I didn't, I wasn't born knowing about SSH. So the first time that I, <laughs> the first time that I joined it, I didn't even knew what a SSH key was. I think that I didn't even even had one for the first four years or something. And Mo was right. the one that saved me and say, okay, just go and draw. I don't care, just draw. Right. Yeah. 
Why does somebody need? Uh, I, I know that the technology has started to grow, and now we have different tools, and now there is different things that we can do with SSH and open. I don't know how to say it in English, whatever. But the thing is that, do you need that to start designing, or can you learn that once you're part of the community? That's the main issue. Yeah, make it possible to begin with, but then in the future go, hey, this is going to be a lot easier if you do this. And people go, oh, okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Right. It's, yeah, because I remember I when I I was the same, when I first joined Fedora, I had no idea what an SSH key was, and I just followed the instructions, and I think I I did something wrong and put, like, put, the, put my private key. Are you the key. person that put the private key in the... Uh... Yeah, no. in there because I mean even like no, but, <laughs> but yeah like I, I didn't understand what all these files were I knew it was privacy related but then it's like well I just followed instructions on the wiki and it's like that if I'm just following instructions on the wiki it'd be easier if it's something did it for me automatically right but, I mean, if you're if you're coming to Fedora and you have a programming background, most programming. I mean, I went through CS program. You learned what SSH was, right? I took a CS program at the same time I did an electronic media and art program. And in the electronic media and art programs, they taught you how to do FTP. At the same time, in computer science, we were learning SSH. So the different fields are at different places too. So I mean, you know, I'm educated in both, but one taught me SSH, one taught me FTP. I mean. It's, different so people from different backgrounds just there's different knowledges that they need um okay so anything just else keeping about... with Kushal, just keeping with Kushal, what he said about going always to the wiki video tutorials and other graphic stuff if we want yeah. people to stop seeing the wiki wiki should not be an option for new people to see the options or the guidance that they need to join the community Okay. It's more personable. You hear from a real person. It's not just reading a page and figuring out what it really means. You have a video. Yeah, so in, yeah, in the role right, play right. in the role playing sense, like the wiki is really confusing. Type stuff is more interactive. It's not just reading a page. It gives right. people an, an option to interact. That's um, uh, that's another thing we can do there. Yeah, somebody you know, so so a person to actually interact with them for a particular time. And just Sorry. something that's edited and read, like curated rather than the wiki, which is just right. grows organically. And... So is there anything else, sort of the second step, you figured out, you want to join Fedora, you've started the process, what are the things people get snagged on once they've started? Is there anything else? Yeah, so uh, IRC, I think, is another scary barrier to entry for a lot of people. Um, and even like, when I started getting more active in Fedora, when I started working for Red Hat again, um, I had been, you know, I, I used IRC in the 90s, and it took a little bit for me to get comfortable back on IRC. And I think I'm, you know, pretty geeky and uh, it, down with those kind of things. And I even had IRC, you know, I knew, knew IRC and IRC culture from before. If you're coming to this new and have no idea about the tools or the culture or what a Zod bot is or how a meeting is run, like that can be very, very intimidating. Yeah. Well, the same I'll say for mailing lists. And I saw at South by Southwest a couple of years ago, I saw a talk by Jeffrey Zeldman. He's like a really famous web designer guy. And he was talking about mailing lists as if they were done, like they were dead like 10 years ago. He's like, I even heard that people still use those. I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, and and mailing lists at least like you know people are still e even if emails for old people still people are still vaguely familiar with the concept, but IRC is a whole nother level of esoteric beyond that even. Right. And then there's Slack. So I think oh, I feel like also... the worst, which in many cases is the worst parts of a mailing list and IRC put together. Oh, I've never used it. That's like the web IRC client thing, right? No, not exactly. Yeah, no. so we also have that Vata.com. It's an open source project. Like, if you want, we can, like, I think there was a talk in Flock this year from that developer about having oh, a Fedora instance. Yeah. Yeah. We, we should also, I feel like we should capture the point about the wiki here. So I'm a new person. 
um, I got a reference to a wiki page from someone who was trying to help me get into this group and, and accustomed to it. I went to the page. It's it's huge. The page is full of links. I followed the links. I got really lost. I ended up reading about 15 or 20 pages and it was a lot to take in. And I'm not really sure at the end of it what to do. And some of the pages conflicted with each other. Okay. So I'm just I'm just role playing that in, but I feel like let's let's also get the wiki you know, the wiki being a you know, like an overgrown, it's kind of a really overgrown garden at this point. Okay, and then one thing I want to add is, um, you know, like I want to contribute to the design team and I go to the design team wiki page and it looks kind of dead. Like I don't see action happening. I don't see people, like I don't see that, it doesn't look like it, you know, I checked the timestamp, it hasn't been updated for three or four months. Are they dead? Are they still alive? Where are they? Like, where is the action? So uh, I'll make the post it. Where is the action? Yeah, and the thing is, uh, if you go to the wiki, uh, a lot of the SIGs and things actually are dead, and you can't tell the difference between the dead ones and the alive ones because they both look dead. <laughs> I'm going to put dead versus alive. Everyone looks dead. <laughs> I, I'd add another another pain point is anytime anybody has to drop to the command line for anything. We're talking about SSH keys and, and IRC, but Git is another one. When we use Git outside of oh, yeah. programming projects, Marie with badges, I tried to set her up using Git to actually push the art assets directly in the beginning, and it was like magic invocations that she remembered for a week and then never did again. You know, got a new machine and there was yeah. no setting it all up again was not an option. Uh, I don't know who Melga is, but there's a question on the uh, on IRC. That's, that's Gabrielle. Okay. What's he asking? Uh, why don't we use the join group for two through people through what they want to do? Okay. So I'll put um, join group as welcome wagon. All right. We're getting pretty full up, right? Um, I got a little bit of spice though. I guess we should stop at a certain point. Yeah, so it's like a quarter off. So we have a little over an hour. So maybe what we should do, unless there's any other, anybody have anything brilliant or pressing, or it's just we've got to write it down. Okay, all right. So why don't we kind of move forward a little bit here. Um, everything should be on the pirate pad. I think what we should try to do now is... Well, we, we have, there's a few different ways we can go. So one way we could go is, and, and I put this in the initial announcement of the meeting, there is this idea that we've been floating around, and we came up with it when we were first thinking about having to redo the website for Fedora Next, um, was having sort of the getfedora.org, which is for users, for them to pick up Fedora and get some basic information about it, and then having another space where contributors can go, that's not just the wiki, but it's a real website like geared towards them. And that's called Fedora Hubs is the idea that, that's the name we've given the idea. And what we could do is we could sort through all of these newbie issues that we've got tacked up and one by one talk about would, would design hubs as we've thought of them now, would they help this issue? Would they not do anything? Is there anything hubs could do to help it? So that's one way we could go. Um, another way we could go would be to prioritize the issues we have and then just brainstorm solutions that we could do for each one. I mean, I could go either way. I think it might be, it might be neat to compare them against Fedora Hubs because as we were going through them, I was even thinking about how Fedora Hubs could do. So is anybody opposed to just doing that? Okay, so we'll go through the Fedora Hubs way. Um, does anybody need like a quick whirlwind tour of what Fedora Hubs is, like the idea so far? Okay. Good, but, uh, just as a quick aside, Laura sure. is posting something in uh, the Pirate Pad that I, something else to consider. Okay. Docs, do we restrict the tools? But... Laura, do uh, you want to speak this? Or... Sorry. Um, yeah, the one thing it's I see as a, a roadblock for new contributors to the doc team is that we're kind of restrictive when it comes to the tools that are contributors can use. And if we can somehow remove that barrier to entry, it will make life much easier. 
I think it's way too much to ask a new technical writer to learn SSH, to learn Git, to learn XML, to learn DocBook, to learn Publican, to learn all these different things in with before they even get a successful contribution out the door. Especially yeah, as a volunteer, as a voluntary activity. That's that's such a good point. I mean, it, it, it's this, we've we've had that problem for you know over ten years because it was the same thing when I started in 2003. Um, it's such a high bar, and you know, I, I think there's a whole swath of issues that are in this list that we've made on these post-it notes that really fall into the too much technical mumbo jumbo uh, column. So excellent. Does anybody um, know how GitHub I/O works? I have this page on GitHub.io, and I'm using a borrowed computer, and I don't remember. It's in the Fedora Design repo. So the name of the group is Fedora Design No Space. And then it's somewhere on github.io, and I can't find the stupid thing. Let me see if that's it. No. OK, I will be right back. It's in my browser history on my workstation. I'll get it from there. Silence. Rob's going to go find it while you were gone. Oh, okay. I think. It's fedora design.github.io slash fedora. Yeah, I was just about to. So I'll just, I'll give every, well, you know what, maybe I should do a screen share with it. Um, see if I can do that. I'm also pasting it into the uh, fire pad. Okay. Can you guys see it? Yes. Okay. So I will just give you a quick whirlwind tour here. So, um, and I know some of this is like totally obsolete because we have fast three going on too. But, um, so the idea is that you come to this Fedora Hub site. If you need a login, because you don't have a FAST account, I think even though we do have FAST 3, um, I think that no, we should more, have a... More. Hi? Can, can you give me a second? Sure. Uh, before, we, before we can start to work on this, we should look um, through our teams. Each team ha has different... Um, things which you have to do to join the team. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. It's designed with that in yeah. mind. Let me, we'll go through yeah. it and then we can talk about yeah, that. Yeah, let me finish, let me finish my sentence. We, we can definitely on some teams that make more unified, so this makes it easier in generally to join a team. Yeah, there is nothing against for every contributor to have a personal wiki page, e.g. Yeah. Some teams want this, why not the others? There are some differences. They must be like on the infrastructure team, that's uh, totally okay. But on the others, we can definitely unify this more. Sure. That's a administrative uh, thing, which should be uh, done from the top to the bottom. Yes, yeah, trying now, to streamline the entry process, no matter what team you're on. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, so, okay, so we're assuming that you don't have an account here. So I think even though I think we have like a new FAST3 and we're gonna have a new FAST3 UI, my my thinking about this, and I've seen, I've seen the new FAST3 UI, I feel like FAST3 should be the place where if you're a group admin or you're just, you're trying to administer, it's like an admin panel. And I think that this is a more individual user focused way to access FAST. And I think that it could just use the API or whatnot to connect to FAST 3. So I'm not saying that this is like a re-implementation. This is just the new user workflow. And it's something that everybody does once. So you go in and you create your username. And I tried to make it as simple as possible. We could do a little survey or something to get a picture of people's skill sets or whatever from this flow too. But this is all I did now. And it's based on the current FAST creation process. But you just fill in this stuff, and then I have 
I think this is just stuff like if it's acceptable or not. I have some notes in here, but you guys have the link so you can like read through all the nitty gritty. I'm just trying to give you guys a quick overview. So if you have an account, then you log in with your FAST account. And Tatika is our model here. Um, so when you first log in, you're going to see, um, and this will be driven by this is that, <laughs> is anytime someone mentions you across all of Fedora, you get a little notification. You know, like if somebody asked you for a sponsorship request, or somebody mentioned you in a blog post, or if somebody mentioned you in a mailing list posting, or if they replied to something you said, or if you got a badge, this is sort of your personal stream of stuff. You know, kind of similar to how Facebook gives you a stream of stuff related to you, or G Plus, or whatever. So it's kind of social networking. So I assume all this is May, may I short? May I short? Uh, OpenSUSE has such a thing called Connect. Connect? Yeah. Uh, okay, can you put a link to it? Yeah, connect.opensuse.org. Is it with a K or a C? C. Okay. Just with a C. Oh, interesting. Okay, well, let me, I'll go into this more and we can see how it's different. So you have your personal feed here, and then let's see. Then you might notice across the top is we have these different areas, right? And this is where it kind of inherits a bit of Reddit's architecture. So there's always going to be a me tab, and that'll be the first place you see when you log in. But then there's going to be tabs along the top for the teams that you participate in or that you follow. You don't have to be a member of a team to follow it. You can just subscribe to it and get updates and whatnot. Um, but if you're a member of a team, as soon as you join the team, its tab appears in your hub. If you want to just follow a team, you have to go out and find it and add it. And there's a lot of different things here. Most of the teams in this mock-up are actual Fedora teams, but I put an example here, Fedora Next, and that's an example of a project. So you could, we probably have team hubs that are, you know, we sort of, we create them at the outset. They're part of the system. They're always going to be there unless the team disbands for whatever reason. But then um, we also had the idea that you could have project-based hubs. So you have a group of people like this group here today, right? We're kind of from all across Fedora and we're just talking about the new contributor experience. We could make a, a newbies group and that would be a project rather than a team-based group where a bunch of us from different teams are working together on a project and we can use it to communicate. Um, so, you know, and, and it, could, it could have a, a, an expiration date like it could be we're working on something, the F22 wallpaper. And then when F22 goes out, we archive the group and it's not active anymore because we're done with that project. So there can be teams and there can be projects. Um, okay, let me go down here. So this is an example of a team hub and we did the design team because it's the team we know really well, right? But I mean, we'll probably sit down with a few key uh, teams and, and work out a good flow for their page by default and provide tools for teams, other teams to customize their own page. But the idea here is the members in the upper right, that's the number of people who are actual members of the team that have met all the requirements to join the team and are active um, fast group members. And then subscribers, that's the people who are just following the team. They have that hub in their list and they can read it. It's the same as like on Reddit where you have admins of a subreddit, and then you have people that are just subscribed to it or just follow it. And then there's an area here that's sort of like the welcome wagon, like this is how, this is what we do, these are some of our policies, and link you out to more information. We could also have some sort of little widget that started you on a newbie, join the Fedora team. Um, I think one idea that Remy had had was make it a, like a badge mission where there's like five badges involved in becoming a full Fedora design team member. You have to do this, 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 and it would guide you through the process and maybe connect to the badges system to do it. So some kind of introductory flow, would you like to join this team? You could have that banner ad here and that could link you out to that. So that's, that's one idea there. And then we have just right here in the upper corner here, you know, faces and names of people who are in charge. So you're a new user, um, you want to join the team. These are people you can talk to in case you don't know anybody. These are the people that own the group and can help you out. And then as you go down the page, you'll see I have, oh, I just made a straight click and moved it. Hold on. It's a touchpad and I'm not a touchpad person. Okay. So we have a little IRC 
client embedded in here and it'll hook up. So depending on what team, like this is the design team. So this one's hooked up to the Pound Fedora design channel. Um, and it's just a little client so that it, you want to join Fedora and start designing artwork, you just go to their hub and right away you can see what they're talking about. You don't have to download and configure an IRC client. You can just get started there. Later on, as you get more sophisticated and more involved in Fedora, you may decide you want to use a full-fledged IRC client. Then you can graduate to that when you're ready, but you can design right off the bat. That's kind of the idea here. Now, this is an idea... Is that something that exists today or something that's proposed? Warta is a is a web-based IRC client, so I don't know if there's a way we could like the, the tech stuff. Okay. I'm kind of leaving All right. the designer that... pony stage at this point. Sure, I just figured yeah. it out. And then, so this Fedora. Oh, I keep clicking somewhere. I'm not a good touchpad user. Come on, you have a mouse. <laughs> Hold on, minor technical issue here. Okay. There we go. Okay. So this first thing here, this is Fedora Design GitHub.org. That's an actual design team mailing list post. So then my idea is if we had some kind of widget that maybe it could use HyperKitty somehow by some pony magic. Basically any post, like the first post to a mailing list. It, it'll operate just the same as if it was on HyperKitty. So you'll see like a lot of the design, I kind of copy pasted from HyperKitty's UI, but it's basically the first post is treated almost like the post. And then all the follow-up responses are like comments. And you can see it's really easy. I don't have to sign up to a mailing list. I don't have to set up mail filters. I don't have to figure out why am I getting 200 messages a day. I can just read it on here and I can respond and I can follow it and it's fairly simple. And then here is an example blog post. So if somebody on the design team who's in that fast group makes a blog post, that would also get aggregated here. So it's sort of, um, oh, and then we also have a little ticket thing here and I can't, stop. Oh, okay, there we go. Um, there's also like little widgets. Since the design team works a lot based off of tickets now, we could show kind of open tickets. These are tickets that people could take. So if I want to work on the design team, you know, I can see the newest open tickets. Maybe we can have another widget that showed tickets that are recently closed, so you can see what we're working on. Or maybe if or the ticket's high, closed. Highest priority ticket. Right, the highest priority or stuff like that. And then if stuff is completed, you could see it go through in the mainstream, so you can see what we're actually working on. But this is just, you know, just an idea. Um, that's really all there is to it, is all those mock-ups. That's all we have so far. Um, let me see if I can turn that off. Okay, so is that that's a pretty good, I think, introduction to the Design Hub's idea. And you know, you may have observed we do have a lot of technology in place that could be used to build it. I mean, there's some magic pony incantations that might be needed to make things happen, but for the most part, that's the idea. So maybe what we can do next is go through the pirate path for all the post-its that we came up with and talk about how could Design Hubs address those issues. What's up, Pingu? Uh, is this a readable interface or is it a C read and write? Is it is it what? Sorry, I couldn't is hear. Is it a readable or is it oh, read and write? Oh, yeah, yeah. So um, it's whatever you want. Um, the initial idea was we could start out with it being almost like a UI front end to Fed message, and then as it grew, maybe get a little more sophisticated. Where I see this mock up being in a write mode is if you're replying to a HyperKitty post, then it's actually sending out a mail. If you reply to a blog post, it's actually putting a comment on that blog. I don't know if there's an API to do that, but whatever. And then the IRC thing, if you type in the IRC channel, it's writing in the IRC channel. So from that aspect, it's writing out, but it's writing out to another system. I think the only bits that this system is going to store and manage is maybe the, the create a new user flow stuff. But that's even sort of, that goes over to fast. So maybe the only thing this system manages is your subscriptions to hubs. Because your, your membership in a team is managed by fast. It's really just going to be per user, this is the list of hubs they listen to. And that might be it. That might be all the app stores. Yeah, so there is no actual uh, data which is specific to hubs, and that would actually create a split in the community between those that are using hubs and those that are not. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, if you decide you don't want to use hubs, if you want to keep on the way you're keeping on, 
you're reading from the same data sources that Hubs is, so it's not like you're getting, you're missing out on anything, basically. You're not. Yeah. Okay. So let's see. The let's go through the post here. Okay. So the first post we have is where do you need my help? Um, do you think this system would help people figure out where help was needed? Or is there a way we could do that? I think the, the list of open tickets widget makes sense. And then also just the general activity stream helps because if you can see what the active people are doing right now, then you can get kind of an idea of what might also need help. You know, maybe they, like on my team, we do code reviews of pull requests. And if you see those going by, then you can jump in too and see what the change is and maybe comment and say, this looks good. Cool. And it's purely from a personal, uh, you know, a personal promotion or, you know, uh, bragging to your boss kind of way. You also have a nice place for, that, uh, for someone else to go and look and see what you've been up to for the last couple of, uh, couple of weeks. Right, right. Sort of the built-in status report. Yes, exactly. So that takes, you know, maybe you don't have to write a status report every month. Your boss just looks at the uh, month, your month's history and says, yeah, right. you haven't been doing enough. So or, maybe, maybe we should put some more. I'm going to put this in like a random, I'm going to put like idea parking lot or something. I'll put, um, some facility to archive or track past achievements or whatever um, interactions on hubs. So we may want to store archive stuff. Because that was one thing that me and Ryan have talked about a lot lately is like Fedora Magazine is great because it's this separate blog that stores stuff. But Planet doesn't, like once it's scrolled off Planet, it, it's kind of gone. And you have to go out to the individual spaces. So it might be neat if hubs would archive things, although that might be also very costly. <laughs> so we'll see. But I'll put that on here too is serve as a project wide archive. Okay. We have the archive forever in terms of uh, the Fed message history of planet activity. We have that. I mean, that oh, like three okay. Years. So really? yeah. that's gotta be in the that's gotta be in the gigabytes by now. If we don't actually have the full posts archive, just the links to the posts. Right. No. I, I, well, I mean, even just I, I see how much fed, how many fed messages go by every single day. I can't imagine that that's not adding up. If you're saving all of those messages, <laughs> it is adding up. <laughs> okay. So what is up to date? What is accurate? Uh, every information box should have a sign of currency. Last okayed. Uh, could, who, who wrote this? I'm wondering a little bit about. Oh, oh that's me. Oh, yeah. Give us more infos. Oh, sorry. I was just so so as we were going through and kind of making suggestions, I just I kind of hopped it up to this one. Um, you sure. know what? I heard I heard people saying things about, um, you know, when this when this bullet came up, it was about right. How do I know that this information I'm looking at is correct about what I need to do on the team, right? Which ties directly into some other information later where we talked about the wiki and how it's stale and you can't tell there's activity. Is it dead? If if the information that we present in hubs, um, especially where it's just read only information about, you know, here here's a list of things, right? Or here's some information about the team. If there's some little indication that it's current, that would be great. OK, then, then yeah. And then, like, once we get to a certain point, right, we can kind of avoid the overgrown garden problem if a certain time after that date, like, an alarm goes off, essentially, and a, something goes out to the team saying, hey, is this information box still correct? Or Ooh, the resources that yeah. we've listed here are still correct? And then somebody has to re-up that from the team, right? It may just be going in and saying, you know, resaving it to confirm that it's okay, but it gives the team like an action of making sure that it's up to date every say six months or something, whatever. Okay. Yeah. And like another idea, um, when me and Remy were talking about this yesterday, one idea that we had, it was that, especially for the project based ones, if like, you know, it's the F20, let's say it's the, the Fedora 10 wallpaper hub. After a certain period of inactivity, like maybe 45 days, maybe something more generous, it should just sort of gray out and maybe have a notification. This is an inactive hub. You know, cobwebs, cobwebs hub. grow on it. Yeah, that's kind of a cool idea. Cobwebs on 
inactive. I think, uh, yeah, I think I, I typed something on line 56, maybe below where you are about. Oh, oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. Oh, okay. oh I was going to get rid of mine. Okay, cool. Whatever. All right. Um, do we think that hubs could address if people are kind of first starting out and they want to introduce themselves, but they're nervous or scared to talk to these people because they don't know them? Is there any way it could help with that? One thing that we could potentially do is uh, I noticed that people don't generally have a problem and in, in introducing themselves on things like Facebook and Google, uh, and Google Plus environments. So maybe we tie uh, in to Facebook or Google Plus's API to actually just have the, like the Fedora Social or the Fedora Help uh, groups there just uh, just visualized here. So someone can go straight into that. Just ask that community. Or, or at least read from the fact that that community is getting these questions, and so that we know that we at least the people. Monitor. So they see it's more like they I'm not like, going to jump unless you jump first, and if I see other people jumping, I'll jump. Well, uh, no, I'm, uh, what I'm saying is people are already doing some of this, but they're not coming to, directly to our community. They're going right. and asking Facebook's version of our community. So maybe we right. at least read from that, and so that the people that would respond would be getting their their view of it on the hub at least. I don't know. I, I, I definitely, like, I don't really follow the Fedora G+. Plus. I do follow the Fedora Facebook, and it's more, isn't it more users, like, asking questions yeah, about using yeah. Fedora? I don't know that it's yeah, people that, saying, I want to help. I, I see more of that. I see more of uh, suggestions, at least, or, or, or you know, or, or issues right. turn up on the G+. Plus Fedor so maybe that's Fedora on Facebook is, like, Fedora on Facebook is, like, a uh, more polite, usually more polite version of pound fedora on irc that, that's where people go now they don't go to irc for this which you know supports something matthew said earlier i i think that but i think it's a different that's a different kind of engagement than people who are trying to do something for fedora um one of the the big groups on facebook um fedora dash linux is one that i monitor and and work in occasionally and well actually quite constantly and uh we get very, very few people on that list who are actually looking to do something for Fedora. They're really looking for user help. Which so is I, think, I think that may be a different, di a completely different audience than what we're talking about for hubs. But but I did have an idea that was a, a, like kind of hubs related. And uh, I was kind of freaking out here on video and Ralph was laughing at me because I was thinking about, wouldn't it be cool if the people that we could introduce you to on hubs are people with the, the highest cookie rating? Oh, <laughs> uh -huh. here's your cookies. Now get to work. <laughs> it's it's like, a, like a, giving someone a cookie is then like recommending them for uh, Java on LinkedIn or something. This person is nice. This person is really helpful and nice, and you should definitely talk to them. Are you familiar with the curse of competence? <laughs> yes. We could also have like a, a cartoon animated paperclip that. No, <laughs> helps you out when you first log in. <laughs> Clippy.js totally already exists. We just have to reuse it. So it's a hot dog, but, but no, not Paul, a that paper is actually cup. a really good idea because it does help us. Uh, if you're if, someone who's helpful, if you're someone who's helpful, somebody has been giving you cookies, and then yeah. you're going to rise to the top of people uh, people to uh, ask for help. Maybe everyone knows the, what we're talking about cookies here, right? I do, but you should explain it. So there's a relatively new feature I don't that uh, Ralph added that's awesome, which basically means that anytime someone gets a, you, you can basically feed somebody kudos and they and they add up. Uh, and the more of them you have, you know, some of them lead to badges, but we could all be also be feeding onto this to say, hey, if I'm, if you know, 300 people have said you've been helpful to me, that's you're probably you should be on the top of the list of people to ask for help from. They have cookie monsters. Yes. So we introduce people to cookie monsters. <laughs> okay, so if you're if you're nervous or scared to say something, can we somehow work this into that? Like maybe maybe we have a widget that highlights the cookie monsters in that hub. Like the people who are members of that I, I hub. think I I think that just on the basic look of the page, the fact that you don't need to sign up to IRC to send a message and you don't need to sign up to a mailing list to send a mail, cuts down that tremendously. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. 
Yeah, because the amount of people like on the users, I know it's we scoped it out, but like on Google and on Google Plus and Facebook, people just jump in and ask questions because it's it's there. At the moment, they either have to sign up to the mailing list or figure out IRC. Yeah, so Laura's right. Yeah, yeah. I think having it there, like people. People love to write comments on the internet. So right, that's essentially right. what we're opening up, which good or bad. But right. yeah, that's so that definitely will reduce that barrier. So But Hypercade is gonna solve this any day now, right? April. Yeah. Really? And yeah, oh, good. yes. About time. Take two or three weeks. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well awesome. it's that's not our issue, that's upstream that's what we do about. Uh, no, uh, but I mean the the idea there would be we you'd still have a login, but you'd have a one, you know. One open ID login, presumably, to get into right. any web address. And so, oh, and this should all tie into that. So, yeah. if you're on a hub page and you're commenting, and you're kind of being a bit of a troll. I mean, it's going to tie into your HyperKitty profile. So, you can't be naughty here, and then somehow, you know, that naughtiness doesn't follow you on the main HyperKitty. It, it should definitely. Well, I, I wasn't I, I wasn't concerned most, uh, to, as much about the uh, the the ban the auto banning type stuff as yeah. as I was about the lack about. Yeah, being able to sign in with a single account to to HyperKitty and go and then go post you know to what looks like a message board right on any of the mailing lists right no well it definitely has a thing where you have to subscribe to that and then it's just it it subscribes you to the list but it turns off mail delivery by default and I mean you can go and but but I mean at that point we we've given people a way to do this thing. <laughs> Do this, to, yeah. <laughs> Do this that doesn't require them to, first of all, locate a, a subscription page, click right. on it, wait for a link. We, right. we, give, we, give, we reduce that barrier, we reduce the intimidation. Right. Okay, cool. So we're good there. We'll move on with wiki pages are confusing. Um, so one thing about Hobbs is that it's definitely, it's very active. There's not too much static information. Like I'm envisioning just like that basic thing on that Fedora design team page that talked about what the design team is and like the community rules and stuff. We might have some section to, if you want to sign up, it'll put you to some kind of sign up flow. But other than that, there's not going to be a lot of static content. So I don't know if, I mean, wiki pages are sort of different than that in that it's sort of static and it sort of tends to document a thing. It's something you can point people to, but if the hub is sort of this stream, I mean, you can't point someone to a Facebook page, and so I mean, it could be that we remember. I, this is how I operate. I don't know if you guys do too, but I'll just remember. Oh, Ryan wrote a really good blog post about how to write for Fedora Magazine, or Matthew wrote a really good post about how to join Fedora. So if somebody asks a question about that, even like three years from now, I'll think about that post and I'll be like, It should be possible, to, it it should be possible to pin things to the uh, to a to a. Yeah. Common area in the you know in the design team hub. Yeah, so maybe each team and each project can have like a pin area, so you can pin a post, and then you can go to that area and you can see all the posts that were pinned. That might be neat. Or maybe like, or maybe you can list the top ten um, viewed or appro approved or liked, whatever the word we want to use. Mm, well, the, I, that's good too, oh, but it's separate, I think. People tend to follow. No, absolutely the, separate. Well, I mean, the problem with basing it on likes is that people tend to, uh, that tends to fall into whatever is controversial, not into not whatever is useful. No, what what I mean by liked, meaning that this is something that's uh, proven true and and still accurate. Yeah. And we can make it instead of a like, like a, a lot of systems have. Is that was this helpful? You know, so it's just these are the most helpful. These are ones users said were helpful. Sure. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's really cool. But I mean, also having a mandatory, you know, a, a, an override that just says a group admin says I'm pinning this because this is important. Exactly. It's similar to like online forums where they have to pin posts at the top, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like it shouldn't. Uh, I do, and and maybe it's just because I'm not familiar with online forums and I don't really hang out in them. When I go to an online forum and I see like ten, read this first. Must read, but I feel like I'm getting nagged. Like I've been a bad girl, and I, I right. need to. You, you well, want I'm, to I'm, I'm not saying that these need to be on the front. I'm yeah. just saying that there should be a link that just says exactly. really useful information here. Click right. through, and then you've got, you know, 
uh, Emily wrote this really great uh, uh, Inkscape, Inkscape uh, tutorial. So right. here's that's post pin one, and you know you want to uh, learn how to how to uh, work work with some other t uh, tool, or or you want to know how to submit a patch to the uh, to the design, you know, or what's the process to file a bug and submit a, a, a submit changes to the uh, right. to the wiki. And but so, I love how it's like it, it's like the way you describe it. It's more like a team library, your yes. team resources, and it's on the side and it's not in your face. Like eat all these vegetables before half, like, having fun. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. Yes. That's I right. like that. Okay. Cool. All right. We have we have 40 minutes, so we do have plenty of time. But I'm going to keep chugging. But if anybody, if you want to go back to something, we totally can. I mean, brainstorming is not linear. So, um, so the next one is uh, going to an Before we move on, I just have a, like two questions oh. I wanted to ask. When sure. it comes to the actual individual contributors, is there a way to indicate on their action, in their page um, how many cookies, badges, or whatever they have? And oh, absolutely. And if, if, yeah. if, if they're considered uh, an ambassador or a mentor or whatever other information we want to use, you know, with, with, some, with some interesting uh, icons to go with it. And sort of to add to that, like at the moment we've got sort of the loose fast page. We also have your wiki profile page. Would the hub page sort of then be the, 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 the site that describes you on Fedora, like with the cookies and the um, – badges and that kind of stuff so and with all my my details that i want to share like kind of thing yeah because that is one issue and i run into it a lot because um my username is duffy but then i use mismo and irc and then i really prefer people to use my red hat mail because i have a dream host situation so like i have all these things that are like don't quite line up and a lot, a lot of times things assume that you're FAS account is the same as your IRC NIC is the same as this and that. So, and I mean, a lot of things, we have things in place to like work around that. But then you have like the wiki page and you have the FAS profile and the FAS web UI and there's all these places. So it might be neat to just say the hub profile is the place that that's where all the updated user information is. And it'll get, I mean, my one thought about that is that if users like individuals are using Fedora Hubs as their primary FAST tool. So like their email address changes or their phone number changes or something changes and they want to go in and edit it. I would think it'd be very natural to go into Hubs and go to your user profile and click edit profile. So that's like your primary FAST editing space. Since it's the primary place you're updating it anyway, it should be calling anything from FAST and making sure that information is always up to date versus the wiki where you're filling it out by hand. It's not necessarily always up to date. There is a really cool badges widget that I think auto updates, but you have to be pretty clever and understand how to paste that into the page and get it to work. Um, I feel like if the, we built out the profile pages to be as automated as possible, but give people some reign to do some personalization or write up a story or do some kind of funky thing, that could be almost like the directory server of people across Fedora. You could search not just for hub content, but you could search for people across Fedora and make it really easy for you to find them. Because it's one login instead of, you know, like when I was writing the email for you guys before the meeting today, I had like fast um, open and I'm like trying to find people in it and it got easy. Yeah. And I had to log in separately to fast and from the other Fedora things I was in. It should tell you something I, that I, I would I, love to I see that now. It's easier to find information from Zodbot than from the fast web interface. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, 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 that should be horrifying to everyone on this call. <laughs> Was somebody else said something? I didn't hear. I just think that user profile page thing is a great idea. I, I'm really right. excited about that. So we'll make it sort of like the centralized, you know, canonical profile. Yeah, because it, it would then facilitate. You'd be like, oh, yeah, I know that person hung out with the design team. So you go to the design team and see the list of members and go, Oh yeah, there they are, and then you can find their page. Because at the moment, doing it that way, just you can't do it. Well, we could do really neat stuff too. Like you ever, this has happened to me. I'm gonna admit it. I've been talking to someone in IRC, and I think I know who they are, and they're not who I thought they were because their nick is so different than their real life name or their their you know fast account. And I'm like, oh crap, I thought he was him, but he's actually this person. So like, because it's it's hard, but we don't want to like that go on for year, for a year and a half. <laughs> There's been someone who thought Maureen Duffy was a dude and Mismo was a girl and they were two separate people. 
I mean, it happens. So, but one way to like sort of ease that, especially this is hard for newbies. Like you've been around a while, you know people's nicks. We don't want to take away that part of the culture, I think. I think that would be evil and bad. But if they're using the website built in IRC client, if you hover over someone's nick, it could give you their real life name. It could give you, you know, their badges. It could give you some kind of little hover over profile thing. Or even their I'll avatar. Replace live. Hmm? Or even arguably just replace the IRC name. Well, that's the thing. I think that if you replace it, then you're slowly erode that culture away. Whereas if you keep it in place, you know, it's really important to me that people call me Ms. Mo and not Duffy and IRC because they call me Duffy. It sounds very military or something. <laughs> to my last name, I don't go by that. But it's important to me that my last name is my email because that's how I work. So I, I think it's cool to maintain the culture, but then give a hint, you know, so you know who the person is. So I'll just put that in here um, in the parking lot. Okay. All right. So let's I keep put moving on. Oh, go ahead. I put this in IRC. Maybe I should put it in the Pirate Pad as well. Um, Stack Exchange is redesigning their user profile pages right now. And I don't know if there's any ideas we can steal from that, but it's kind of interesting to look at what they're doing and their design process is fascinating. Do they have it all documented somewhere? Yes. Um, I, I, I'll put it in the Pirate Pad. I put it in IRC. Okay, great. It's learning from others is great. That gets us moving faster. Okay. So I have the go to existing contributor and ask. So I think what I'm going to put is if we make it easier to find people, maybe via Cookie Monster status, like we know that they're good, or, you know, just linking IRC NICs to real life names, we can make it easier to find the existing contributor. And that, I guess, that kind of also goes with the one below it, how do I find the existing contributor? So I'm just going to group those two post-its together. Oops. There we go. Okay. Is there more beyond ambassadors? This is something that Tatika brought up. Um, I, I think hubs would help with this in that you can kind of see, it, you don't just log in and see the ambassadors tab. You'd see... Um, all the different team tabs too. I think that maybe we need to think about how do you discover other teams within Fedora when you're in the system. Maybe we give people a default set and they branch out, but how do they branch out? Maybe we need to think more about that mechanism. Let's see. Maybe that's something the initial intake questionnaire or whatever can handle as well. Yes. Oh, that's a good idea. So let's see, initial intake questionnaire can auto sub you to hubs that in areas you may want to be involved in. That's a great idea. And then just thinking about system of discovering new teams, new projects, hubs, and signing up to them. Yeah, offers might be better instead of auto. So there's a website and you sign up and it like asks you all these questions about your interest and then it wants yeah. to give you all these email newsletters. Well, like if like if, you, if anybody joined the Safari, the Safari books, for example, that, oh, they right, exactly right. that. They require you to click at least three uh, things that you're interested in so they can give you a stream of stuff that might that's right. uh, uh, right. you know hot right now. Um, I'm not sure that's necessarily a bad approach. I mean, as long as you can always opt out of it after, it's yeah probably not a bad idea to do the to do the auto subscribe just because it's going to give you. A, an idea of what information you have, because you don't want the only thing you, you once you log in, you don't want the only thing you have to be your own profile, which of course is empty. All right. It's the first really time you signed in. Could be something too, like PlayStation Home has this, and I know I'm making myself very uncool by mentioning that I've used PlayStation Home, but they have like a directory of like places you can go in PlayStation Home, and these are like the hot places to go and stuff like that. But it could be a hub that's just the hub hub. These are the hubs that are active. It's a load, we could, it's a load of hub hub. <laughs> Maybe what we could do is something similar to profile creation, whether it be um, in LinkedIn or even Mojo, that you, your profile has a certain percentage of completion, and only oh, after yeah. you've joined an actual hub is your profile 100% complete. That's a great idea. Okay, cool. All right. So, a, a badge. 
Like the bad, you do have the bad sequence. The yeah, badge. another bitch. Oh. Yeah. What was that? Another bitch for joining up. Oh, yeah, yeah. But even, even if there was well, like... This is effectively the same process. We were discussing this as being the same process as signing up for a fast account. So we already have that badge. Oh, that's true. Um, yeah, that's just... Yeah. So you've got the... There's like the quest system. Yeah. 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 That does, would help. How does, Reddit, how does Reddit do the auto-discovering thing? Bring new ups. What was it? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that. I'm sorry, Pingo. Sorry. How does Reddit do the discovering new new hubs, new new that's, threads? Yeah, that's um, that's an interesting question. I'm not really a Reddit person. I think Remy knows a bit about it. Um, I think yeah. So what what Reddit has. They have, like, by default, you get these different tabs. They have, like, one way up top that's tiny that has, like, featured subreddits. And then the main thing has stuff like hot, new, rising, controversial, gilded. So gilded is, like, our idea for pinning. But if stuff is rising, I think what they do is it's, like, the article itself that got posted to the subreddit. If you click on the article and it's something you're interested in, you can see what subreddit it was posted to and then go to that subreddit and see more related stuff. So I think that the main model that people use to discover is they look at what's the most popular or what's active right now at a story level, not a hub wide level. So I make a post about, I, I rode a pony today and that shows up on the design team hub. My po pony post is going to be on the, the hot, because everybody loves ponies. So my pony post is going to be on the hot and new page on Reddit. And people will click on it and they'll be like, this is awesome. I want more pony posts. And then they'll say, oh, that was posted in the design team subreddit. I'll go there. So I think that that's how they do it. So yeah, I mean, I think that's a good question. Like, that's another way. Um, highlighting popular posts from across Fedora, then you can discover a new hub based on what hub that post was originally on. OK. So the next issue we have on the list is there's so many places for information which place is correct. Um, I don't know if this fixes that or not. I think it really lets those multiple places exist, and it just aggregates yeah. them. Yeah, things like the wiki, the user profile, that kind of thing. Right. It can cut down some of those things ones, I imagine. We could have a much longer term strategy of decommissioning the front ends of certain things if hubs works and becomes popular, like the badges front end. We could keep all right. the badges back end machinery there, but just have it when you try to go to your badges profile, it just redirects you to your hubs profile. You know, oh, yeah. one glory yeah. glorious day. Do the same thing with user wiki pages, but some people might use those for really specific things that we can't capture. Oh. Just a time check. I wanted to know that it was 11:30. Okay, cool. Well, I, I didn't really have anything else on the agenda for today. I think I think we'll just keep okay. cruising. I mean, I think we're doing good, right? We're coming up with a lot of ideas. I didn't know what your agenda looked like. Oh, sure. I just wanted to make sure that if there was, oh, yeah. if there were other higher value uh, items, sure. make sure that you knew what time it was. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Um, is there anything else? in terms of finding information here. I guess you would also have that resources pin area. And I think what we could do is we'll combine it with Paul's idea of the upping it. So like after some, if it got, gets stale, we make the admins verify it and clean it up. Well, what so, about things that are pinned by individuals? You know, do we want to prompt them to say, hey, are you sure this is still interesting to you? or I don't think so. That, well, I, yeah. I don't think so. But I, I mean, things will get stale once. You know, people could say, "Hey, this is a really interesting article," and then five years later, you know, none of the none of the commands right. in that that tutorial still work. Right. Um, you know. Well, it might be. I mean, if we're see, I guess it it depends if we're sort of the place that people like. I set up a blog. I write an awesome Inkscape tutorial. 
and then in five years I move on and my blog expires and it doesn't work anymore. Mm. Does Fedora Hub still hold, hold that? Well, it won't hold the content, but it probably still have it probably still have uh, you know the right. Link. I think that's so there should we be. Just, uh, have a dead link. No, but there should be a way to mark something. This link is dead or something, so it maybe doesn't show up in search results or you know what I'm saying. So I think that I think that that's actually a really good idea. Like some some way of marking. Well, I'm saying post, but it could be anything. It yeah. could be a blog post, and on this post, whatever. Content. Yes, a way of marking post or content as um, broken link or irrelevant or whatever, and it might affect might affect weighting in search results, might make it harder to find, something like that. That's a good idea. So in the case of my Inkscape blog post, in five years it stops working, somebody finds it, oh, I'm so excited, and they click on a dead link, there should be a prominent place to say market the dead link. Yes. Or maybe we can even automate it. I don't know. Well, the only way we could automate it is by having uh, the hub demon just arbitrarily, you know, every one, every month or something, go through and try every link on the site, which is a terrible idea. Yeah. As, as the site grows, plus they probably it would probably get us banned from a number <laughs> of sites. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, another problem here is introducing myself to people I don't know. I think did we already did we already do that one? I feel like we did. I think we've kind of covered that in ter in terms of uh, take you know finding the finding them the right people. I oh think. yeah, the nervous, scared to say something. Right. So I'll put that I'll put that there. I'll combine those two. I want to help. Tell me what to do. Um, <coughs> we kind of did that with where do you need my help? So I'm going to combine those. So the next one is, I want to change something. Help me change this thing. So these are the contributors coming in that they're not just, I want to help tell me what to do. They're like, I, I want to fix this thing. So things like the bug listing on the sides are a good place to start with that. Okay. Especially if we bring back something like the uh, the easy fix uh, project we did for a while, which was just having having a common place to, for projects to register and say, hey, I'm going to mark, I'm going to tag any, any of these bugs that could be used, you know, it could be an easy first try for somebody with the tag easy fix and they'll get all get listed on this. So if you're looking for something to do, you come to this page. And... So that reminded me of something because Ralph had talked about there's two types of new users. There's new users that come and they want to help, but they don't know what they can help with. And there's new users who are like, I want to fix this now. Sure. There's also users right, that- That one is a separate uh, topic. Uh, oh yeah, but I just want to say, I think oh, there's no. a third type. Okay. And these are contributors that aren't contributors to Fedora yet. They might not know anything about Fedora, but they are the perfect person to fix something. And we want to bring them in. So I feel like maybe we could do, because the way you were talking reminded me of how OpenHatch has the easy fixes that they aggregate across open source projects. Yeah, that's the same So idea. if maybe we, we thought to... about some kind of, I don't know, I'm just going to put OpenHatch integration ponies, because it might be neat to make it a thing where I don't even know, like maybe the system can figure out what what things need to be done. Like on the design team meetings now, we have every two weeks, we go through our open tickets and we do have like a list of tickets. These are tickets that we need someone to work on. If there was some, uh, maybe like a jobs board or something on hubs or and maybe, where it goes across all the teams in Fedora, these are things that we need. These are things that we need people to do. If you're looking for something to do, you don't really care what team it's on. And then we could advertise it out. Google Summer of Code lists. Oh, that's true. Yeah, so for the easy fix things, like uh, as I know, like Fedora apps, like they ha we have a lot of good uh, easy fix pointed out uh, thanks to Ralph and Pingu and us. But uh, it's, it's, but uh, like when the new guy or new student wants to come and actually figure out how to set it up the application and how and what is the what are the next steps to go through before they can start writing code or say before they want, they can start uh, designing a new logo. That information is also very much necessary along with um, only the easy fix. Because pointing anyone to the easy fix list is, I mean, that's easy, correct. But actually setting up the whole thing so that they can contribute is difficult. 
Yeah, just to clarify, maybe people don't know that we we already have an easy fix ticket aggregator, but it has to be somewhat manually curated by like you know saying like it doesn't it doesn't crawl the design team track right now, but it could. Um, okay. But it crawls like a, yeah, it crawls our GitHub repos and the infrastructure track repos and some other stuff. Um, but then what Kushal pointed out is like the next step in the process for either of these two categories of people, people who don't know what they want to do and people who do know what they want to do, both of them wind up in the step where now they have to bootstrap a project. They have to like install Inkscape for the first time or they have to set up, you know, a Fedora web app on their local box and that right. that we continually get requests for like, help me, you know, stand up my first Flask app. And it's and often it doesn't yield anything. They get frustrated with it and then walk away. So I actually have some ideas on that too. One of the things I'd like to see once the uh, the new OpenStack is available in uh, Fedora infrastructure is layering on top of that an OpenShift instance where we can actually have projects uh, basically stick a uh, a template for you want to get started. Pull this Git Git repository, push it, and it's and it's uh, pushed automatically to a uh, temporary uh, node in the uh, OpenStack cluster. So they don't have to actually do any setup on their local machine. They just can hack on the code and just auto just push it to an open shift deployment. We're getting down in the weeds, but another option there is Docker uh, for local stuff, but we haven't made any realities happen with that yet. We had someone working on the blocking doc making Docker recipes for some of for some of our application. I don't know where that go, but we had someone starting to work on that at one point. Uh, also, one problem with uh, things like oh. Docker is uh, like it will require much more bandwidth. Like it will be much easier to set a Fed message if they just use PEEP and the virtual end. But if they have to go through the whole Docker process and download an image, uh, that might be difficult for many people. I think at the very least, if if there isn't bootstrapping instructions or demos or tutorials or whatever readily available, it makes sense. I don't. I am getting in the weeds here, but it makes sense that if something's marked as easy fix and we're advertising on the easy fix site, which I'd never seen before, so thank you for the pointer. Um, it might be nice to attach it to a person, because I definitely like. I try to do that with design stuff. Like these are tickets that we have open that we need someone to do. If you want to help with this, pick one out and talk to me, and then I'll do that necessary bootstrapping. Because for some of them, it's like. We definitely, as contributors, have limited time. We're not going to spend like an hour or two documenting every step of the process and every single ticket. And then someone who's on the team already takes it anyway. They didn't need it, right? So, I mean, it's putting a little bit more effort on the newbies, but it's making it more a sustainable process to say, like, this is the design team contact for this ticket. If you take it, talk to them or something. It's already on the easy fix page where you have, for each project, you have someone responsible for it. Oh, okay, that's fantastic. How do you guys assign that? Uh, so you can sign up directly on the wiki. You can put your project oh, there. Okay, so it's just across and... the whole team. Okay. Okay, that's great. Awesome. So it already does it. <laughs> okay. All right. Do we have anything else on this topic? I want to change something. Uh, there, change. I wanted to come. I wanted to come back to the previous one because you. Sure. It was moved to the top. Uh, well, that was the. Um, where do I need? Where do you need my help? Okay. And, well, where do we need my help? And then we have the list of tickets. Okay, this is where you can help. But quite often we actually have people that want to be pointed out to a specific task, more not to a list of tasks, but really like, okay, you have a, you have half an hour, you can work on that. Oh, okay. It's gonna be hard to try to to get. Some. Cool. All right, should we move on to, um, I can do Python, how do I match them to an active use of, useful I think, project? I think. I think we've covered that in the same previous okay. topic. Okay, development guide for a project. A lot of upstreams do this, not all of them. It would be nice to find a way to aggregate them and maybe even help them and help those upstreams develop them, but I'm not sure that's a task for the hub itself. Yeah. So we'll probably put probably outside of scope for hub. I mean, it could be too that like 
If there's an upstream resource that's useful in a specific project hub or a specific team hub, somebody in the team could make a blog post saying, hey, this is a useful resource. It shows up on the hub. Um, and then... uh, yeah. So when I, when I said that part project, I was much more looking into Fedora sub projects, let's say design team or cloud or workstation or like Fedora apps. So what are the basic, um, so before you can start contributing to say documentation team, what are the minimum minimum set of packages you should install on your computer? Oh, okay. What are the kind of formatting we are using? So things like that. So my idea of project was much more like mm -hmm. some projects within Fedora. And I took the upstream projects as just an, as an example, like, we know that develop uh, developer focused upstream projects they have this kind of documentation ready most of the time it's almost like an stk for that group like you need this software yes. and you need to use these formats that kind of stuff correct that kind of works for for design group, but I'm not sure that you can make any kind of an argument that that would work for the engineering groups. Four? I, I mean, Four? Yeah, I, I think it does. I mean, like, the infrastructure team is very Python focused, you know, so they, they have a specific style that they accept, and they have specific templates and engines and things they do. Like, you have to do a recipe in Ansible, is that right, to have a service deployed? So there's specific standards that they follow. Also, like if you have to su submit a code uh, patch to any of the Fedora apps or infrastructure place, so you have to first submit it for a review. So there must be something written like, how can I submit something for review and who will review? Or if no one is reviewing, where should I go and ask for help? What will be the next step after the review is done? And how a patch actually gets accepted or how, say, how a new wallpaper actually gets accepted into Fedora for next release? That's a great idea. Yeah. And that could even be like either a per team or per project document on the hub, sort of like there's a pin or resources area. There should be an area where this, I call it like almost like team standards, maybe. And, and I think, you know, a great way to uh, a great, like at the how level, uh, a great way to do this would be, you know, if people were on the team were able to, to um, update a document in the same way that people update like a markdown readme in github and it just boom just appears on the on the hub um as an updated you know as an updated document that would be great I mean, in other words it shouldn't be it, it should that really doesn't have to be any harder than the process that people use for updating a readme on the github site right okay great correct what, what is the source of the information there the, the readme that you edit online, where do you store it? That's a good question. <laughs> Otherwise, you're actually building a read and write place where right. you actually split information between the two different sources. Yeah, I mean, it might be that the people on the back end of the team know where that thing is stored, whatever it is, but and it might be established. Yeah, yeah I think that gets back to just things, right? not adding, not Directly. Yeah, but it might be nice for every team to have a document that has some, I mean, what we could do is we could build it, if it's team specific, we could build it out as a, a field in FAST for the FAST group of the team, and then we'll just pull the data from FAST. And then it kind of enforces that when you create a new team in FAST that you have some idea of this stuff. Another thing I was always thinking is that we could actually back it up in the wiki. Yeah, okay. But you think that should be a goal is to try, <laughs> yeah. We could try not storing things and make this app as lightweight as possible in terms of storage. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I, and just to be clear, I, I wasn't suggesting that that, should, that function ought to be built out in hubs, but you know the process that backs it wh wherever that is ought to be pretty easy. And I think this dovetails with some the, some discussions that the Fedora Docs team is having, I think, about trying to have more like a much lighter weight process where you know people are able to update documents as easily as you know we do in something like github so you know this might just be displaying something that's being stored elsewhere for that team cool okay you want to move on we've got um 
best to talk to the person already working on it? How do I find them? I mean, I think that becomes very easy in that you can just go to the project and see who's working on it, right? Whereas right now, you don't know, depending on the team, the action is taking place somewhere, but you just, it's not always obvious because the teams aren't standardized. Here, it doesn't matter where it is because the hub's aggregating it all. So if you go to the hub for the project, you want to contribute, you'll find them. So I'll just say, yeah, this helps. Okay, now here's the thing. Um, I introduced myself and no one responded. It's been three or four days. Can Hubs help with that? That's where we should be using the people that can work as a contact. So the, the people who is actually contributing is not having to be aware of every single mail that is sent. Another thing we could potentially do is for posts that uh responses perhaps we can actually pr uh, promote them on the, on the hubs page you know so as long as if no one has replied um you know we uh, raise them up and if you know and, and if replies are just to, of the hi nice to see you variety maybe have a tag that just says don't count this as far as uh, an actual response yeah what if we had because we know who's a member of the hub we know who's a subscriber of the hub if someone posts, well, I guess that's the other thing is how do you post to a hub if you're not a member? I don't think you can. Well, I mean, if we were talking, if it's tied to, 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 to hypercating right. mailman, then we'd be reading those and just seeing that no, you know, no one has replied to this thread. Could we do something like if you make a post, if we're requiring people to make introductions, just just random idea here. Could we make it so that they have to have self-introduction or some tag? in the subject line and then on the hub as we see posts with this this subject line or contain this phrase coming in if they're unreplied to within so long there's like a widget like help what welcome you're newcomers you're requiring a newcomer to understand a pro uh, understand a process that's yeah but it's just introduction i mean what else are they going to put like i've seen them say introduction i've seen them say hello i'm new stuff like that if you give them or maybe even sure, you have like just, a form. Just today, I just, I just see, you know, I saw an email, uh, new to the list, here's that, I, I have this problem. Yeah. You know, yeah. There's there no standardized form that people are going to use. Yeah, but they're not, if they're saying new to the list, I have this problem, they're not looking to join. They're just looking to, because we definitely on the teams that have like a process. Like Those are on the develop list. So. <laughs> I mean, that sounds like someone who could become a contributor, but that is not their main point. They're trying to solve a problem. Whereas we have people who message, they message websites, they message infra, they message design, they message docs. Often I want to help you guys. All the same email. Sometimes, but I've definitely seen them go out separate. Like I, I heard about the Fedora design team. I want to join. This is my introduction, you know, and they'll do that. But I don't know. Do we really need do people? Something. Oh. Do we really need people to send any mail? Sorry about the noise. Um, so they send an email. They have, and we get a, a message or something that somebody is new and just joined the club, and probably they can have some some stuff that they can click on and say, "Hey, I'm new. I need help." That way, we can see who really needs help and who doesn't. Yeah, that's a good idea. Like maybe. Well, maybe since we have, we'd have the hub system, we'd have a new user flow, which would be based on the badge quest, right? So like for the design team, we could have like a create your account, you got a badge, um, you know, find a ticket to work on. And in order to get that badge, we'll know they're on that step. And they could, like you were saying, Tatika, they could click on a button or something, I need help. And maybe we could have like a little like newbie bin or something on the hub that notifies that people, hey, these these three people need help. You know, can you yeah, just yeah. one of them and help them out? Just imagine this. What what happens if this is successful and we have like twenty or thirty people joining every week? I'm not gonna right. read thirty right. or forty emails every single week. So right. it will be easy just right. to have somebody new is joining or something because it's like you're not reading every single people that is adding themselves to Facebook or Google Plus or Twitter. You just don't. You don't right. have time for that. Right. Also to be contributing so it should be easier than an email 
which for me, we don't have a, a, a real guidance, guidance to fill an email. It's just like, oh, just say your name, what do you do, what do you like? That could be just a form at the website so they can fill a profile. And once we have the pop-up, I just go out and if you feel interested or you can help or something, well, that's it. it should be easier. So I think that's a great idea. So rather than having to send an email and have a specific subject line and having specific data, we just have a form, sign up for this team and it asks whatever questions the team needs to know. So like for design team, we'd be like, you know, can you can you install Inkscape? Do you like to do icon or do you like to do UX? And we'd ask those questions in the form. We want to know which apps does the person use, uh, right. if he has or right. she has a portfolio. So we can see what kind of work and if it's going to work with something that we like or we can use some ideas or anything. Uh, where in the world are you in case you need somebody that doesn't speak English? Because for me, it was a challenge the first two or three years because I had no idea of English. And uh, probably you also want to show the, the conference or or meetings that are currently happening near the person, because if he wants to be friendly, probably he wants to meet somebody personally. It's not necessarily going to a flock. It's just like regular meetings that some communities are having. So that will be right. the first step. Right. What you do, know what he use, and you point him or her where to go. So that will be it. Once, I mean, we're not like, we need people that it's also capable of do things by themselves. It's not like we're going to tell them everything that we want to do, because this is not a work. This is a community. I mean, if people doesn't want to do the work by themselves, at least half of the work. I don't know. I, it doesn't seem that we should spend so much time on people. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And I think making it a forum that they fill out. So we have sort of information. Maybe we can suggest things based on that information. I, I think that's good. I think that's better than having them um, send emails out. I, I do think it might be neat to have some sort of um, area or something. Like I've been on some online communities and I'm kind of trying to figure out, trying to remember which specific ones, but I've definitely been on online communities where if you're a new member, like Nextdoor, if you've ever used that app, if you join a community on Nextdoor, they kind of make an announcement. Hey, this person just signed up. Here's where they live. They're interested in this. Give them a welcome. And it really, it literally is just, you know, hi, how are you? Welcome to the community. But it at least makes it feel like it's more friendly. It, it's really just pleasantries. It's not like useful. <clears throat> but it's kind of neat in that then you get to know people. Um, people introduce themselves to you and you begin to talk to people. And I think that's important. That's just important as like, filling out tickets and whatnot. So it might be neat if we had some kind of, um, you know, welcome these newbies post or something that goes on the hub maybe once a week. You know, here are six people who are new this week. Something like that. And just so that even, it's not so much for the new person as for the people who are existing to know who's hanging around. Maybe there's a way if we have a few key assigned people per project group, whatever, or hub, that um, they're notified when something isn't uh, answered somehow. Okay. Whether it be the project owner or the ambassador or whoever that's associated with the group, something to that effect. Right. So they know this person asked a question and hasn't been helped yet. That makes sense. You know, rather than sifting through 20 emails, that there's some type of notification right there on the hub screen that there's something waiting to be responded to. Right. Okay, cool. So we only have like four minutes. Is there any topic that kind of came up throughout any of this that anybody's like super excited about or wants to talk about? Or hmm? I think it's all exciting. Okay, cool. Is this something we can do? Like, do we have like resources and everything? 
Yeah. What What should our next steps be? We may have one or two. <laughs> one or two resources. <laughs> Well, we're talking about getting together in person, I believe, in late May or June. Is that correct? Uh, and that we first can do more brainstorming June. at that point? Yeah. First week in June? Yeah. So, I mean, we could do some implementation work before then to try and just mess with stuff, but uh, it would probably be helpful to, to talk about, take all these features and then, and then break them down in terms of priority. Um, and then also in terms of difficulty and then have a little matrix of that where we can do the, e the easy and important things first and the hard and unimportant things last. Uh, so if we were chatting on the side, for instance, search on the hubs uh, is probably gonna be one of the most challenging features um, just based on the way things are represented behind the scenes with FedMessage. It's, it's kind of difficult to index that for full text search. Not impossible, but more difficult. And that, <laughs> appears in the in the hub design to be really important. So I, I don't know where we want to go with that. Web chat will be probably more difficult than mailman, uh, sorry, than doing HyperKitty. HyperKitty will probably be relatively easy. So anyways, figuring out all that stuff. <laughs> so 2030 for that to be available. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The one other option that we might want to consider is to start with one hub. And I'm thinking the design hub is probably the easiest because, well, you guys are around and not start with the packager hubs because this is way too easy for us. Yeah, I yeah and that... I think that that's how we can build it out is you start with one specific team and see what little widgets and things they might need, build them out, and then see if those would apply. I think it's better to do it contextually than plan out all the widgets and then find out they don't work for any team. Okay, so I mean, what I can do from here is I can do I can make the list of features that we came up with today and try to kind of build a pseudo requirements document. And maybe I'll, maybe we do another session. Maybe what I'll do is I'll do a rough stab at prioritization and then I'll do like a blog post and ask for feedback and we can change it based on that. And then maybe you guys, the, the app guys can look through it and prioritize or add a column in terms of how much pony or easy it is. Pony being difficult. And then, um, okay, so I'm gonna write that down. Ms. Merle will start this feature. Can we, can we grade the difficulty between unicorns and ponies or? Well, I mean, like ponies, it's like, I want a pony. Like I want the pony, but the unicorn is like, I want full text search and I want it to be super fast and to read my mind so I don't even have to type it. But the pony just to have the search. So how many unicorns do we put on the herbs then? <laughs> you always want to have no unicorns. Like you aim to have no unicorns because then it just makes life easier for everybody. But you want the users to think it's unicorns because then they're super impressed. Okay, so we have that. So is there any other next step things we need to discuss? Or are we good? I mean, we could do, we can keep hanging out in pound Fedora hubs. And if anybody wants to talk about it, we can do it in there. Or we could just do Fedora apps. Mm -hmm. Do you think it makes more sense to do Fedora apps? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that is a designer's life, that, that little slide there. That's what it's like to be a UX designer. Can we make that the 500 page? <laughs> I think we just steal the package. Oh, which reminds me that I should update my pony, the package, so that people can still do DNF install pony. Uh, it's broken now. <laughs> yeah, but what about uh, uh, packages that radioactive panda? That was pretty excellent. <laughs> I was going to suggest that we. I was going to suggest that maybe we we use Fedora apps just because there's always a critical mass of of people there. Okay. If uh, unless unless the apps guys unless they think that's like polluting their channel, like I don't want to, you know, I don't want to force it down anybody's throat. It just seems like, you know, this this is a, sure this is a big project and it's and it spans a lot of teams, but at the same time, it just feels like a lot of the involvement is really going to be tied up in, um, you know, in in application resources and stuff. So it makes sense to kind of go to where they are. 
Another big question I need to ask here, how how uh, how comfortable are we with the fact that well, everything you're talking about so far is very much an NIH solution? Do we want to be actually trying to work with um, well, maybe some of the other distributions to make this a, com a, yeah. a common yeah, public? Right. I don't think I don't think we've I don't think we've declared it NIH. In fact, one of the points that I made uh, up in the chat is that this network, the social engine that OpenSUSE is using, is actually quite interesting. Um, it's called ELGG, and it's the one thing that I think you know is is uh, you know a little bracing there is that you know it's it's based on PHP. We don't have a lot of PHP experience in our team, or, or maybe it's not so much experience, but it's not typically what we use. On the other hand, as a manager, I'm really interested that we not kind of keep reinventing wheels. And if it means that we've got to pick up a little experience that maybe that helps us in other areas too. So I think we need to weigh what the trade-offs are to decide whether or not we ought to be looking at something like that. Well, in a certain sense, it's not an AH either and that it's really just an aggregator. I mean, the aggregator itself is Sort of well, a new thing, but it's like we're not rewriting another hypercase. Yeah, and so you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not trying to say that 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 engine necessarily solves all our problems, but I think we ought to be, you know, we ought to look at it and see, you know, is this something that we could build on? Is this something that we could, you know, uh, you know, contribute to as part of the community? I mean, it looks, it has some interesting users. I, I don't know anything about the overall community health. So that's something that you know we might want to talk to the SUSE people, find out what their experience is there, um, you know how well it's working for them, and uh, you know there are probably other considerations too. But you know I would definitely like to do that and not just assume that we're going to start from from scratch either. Okay, cool. All right, so we're we're past the hour now. We're we're basically out of time. Late for my next meeting. Actually. Yeah. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to blog this all up. And we have a recording. I'll figure out how to get that out to people. And um, we can continue the conversation and pass with our apps. Or does the apps team have a mailing list that we should be using? Or do we just I think use we the infrastructure? OK. OK, cool. So we use the Fedora infra list. We'll use the Fedora apps channel. And then I'll do lots of blog posts. You, you'll get really sick of hearing about this, but we'll have some good communication Never. going. Never. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not going right. to get sick of hearing about this. Okay, cool. Cool. All right, so thank you so much for taking the time. I feel like this has been super productive. We have a lot of really awesome ideas we did not have when we started. So awesome. Thank you so much. And hopefully this is something we can do more, like just across Fedora. It seems to have worked pretty well. So um, thanks. I'm going to stop the recording and... Uh, have a good rest of your day. Thanks. Thanks, Mike.